I can't wait to talk to you guys about this amazing artist named Edvard Munch. Edvard Munch is a Norwegian artist and he has one of the most famous paintings as you can see I painted it on the wall of our art room. Edvard Munch's painting The Scream is the most iconic painting of modern art. Historians call it a Mona Lisa of our time. Now that I taught you guys all about the Mona Lisa, I must tell you all about The Scream. I would not be a good art teacher if I didn't take the time to introduce to you this fascinating painting and the fascinating man who created it. What a story this is. Honestly, you guys, you just can't make this stuff up. Edvard Munch had a series of tragedies in his life that led up to the time this painting was created. His mother died when he was only five years old. His sister Sophia died at the age of 15 of tuberculosis. He had another sister who was institutionalized for mental illness. His only brother, who he was very close to, died of pneumonia. His father was a little bit on the crazy side and um, overly religious and put a lot of pressure on Edvard Munch. He was um, what you, we would call uh, OCD, a very, uh, how could I say, he, he picked at him constantly in, his, in the moral area of his life, which just made him crazy. When we look at how Munch suffered in his childhood from all these tragedies, he also suffered as an adult. He suffered from his own inner demons, so to speak. His drinking spun out of control as an adult, and in 1908, he began hearing voices and suffering from a paralysis on one side of his body. One day, he collapsed, and soon after that, he checked himself into a private sanitarium, a mental hospital. Same story that I told you guys about my favorite artist, Vincent Van Gogh. Also, he felt he heard voices and he too signed himself into an insane asylum. It's very interesting how these brilliant, prolific artists suffer so much um, mentally. Edvard Munch, when he created this poem, uh, I'm sorry, when he created this painting, he actually wrote about his feelings when he was painting it. And he did this by writing a poem, and I want to read that poem to you right now. And as I read the poem to you, I want you to look at the painting and just think about the words that he um, describes, he uses to describe the painting. And I'm going to quote the poem now, and it's, it goes like this. I was walking along the road with two friends. The sun was setting. Suddenly the sky turned blood red. I paused, feeling exhausted, and leaned on the fence. There was blood and tongues of fire above the blue-black forge and the city. My friends walked on, and I stood there trembling with anxiety, and I sensed an infinite scream passing through nature." End of quote. That was the poem that he wrote about the famous painting, The Scream. What I would like to show you now is some of his early work, and as you can see, he was a student of the traditional academic way of painting and then by his travels and visiting other artists in the beginning in, uh, of the Impressionist period, actually I'm, I'm wrong, I correct myself, it was at the Post-Impressionist period where he was influenced by the work of Vincent Van Gogh. And as you look at the painting Starry Starry Night, you can see the influence that that painting and the similarities of the two paintings of the screen. Notice on the wall when I painted to the mural, I actually planned out that at the top of the mural, I would merge the sky of Starry Starry Night into the sky of the screen. I thought that, that the, the movement of the line and the line direction and the, the texture of that feel would be perfect to put at the top of the mural. Now let's watch how the painting was sold in New York City in 2012 for $119.9 million. Edward Monk, The Scream, from 1895. Here he is. 44 is bid, 45 in the room, 46, 47 in the room, and 40, 48 is already a, 48 is on my left, 49 with Patty, at 49, 50 in the room. At 50 is already in the room. 69, 70, 
71, 72. At 72, it's Charlie's bid at 107. Anybody else? At 107 million dollars then. Patty? No? At 107 million dollars, it is Charlie's bid against to Stefan. I shall sell it then for the historic sum at 107 million dollars. Hammer? So, thank you, Charlie. Yeah. And we are quick at work to say that now the world record for any work of art sold at auction is this painting, Edward Munch's The Scream, and it made with buyer's premium $119,900,000. seems an ambiguous race, sex, and ageless creature. Its hands are held to its head, and from its mouth derives a silent screech. The dynamic lines and the intense colors shoot into the landscape and amplify this unheard scream. It is thought that this asexual being is inspired by a Peruvian mummy on display at the World Exhibition of 1889 in Paris. The figure could represent Munch, or personify nature, or even both. The scream is mainly seen as a symbol of modern anxiety and alienation. Munch felt discontented with the evolving modern world and its irreversible impact on nature. The anxieties portrayed in the scream and other paintings by Munch are a more general and ambiguous expression rather than a specific one. In this case, it's a howl of anxiety for modernization and its effects on nature. Without a doubt, it is a result of Munch's tortured psyche. The Scream has been a substantial source of inspiration for pop culture. It has been parodied hundreds of times in cartoons, but has also been reproduced in art. For example, Edo with his The Second Dream, or Ding Dong. Even Andy Warhol. You might know the cartoons Wiener Dog Art by Carrie Larson. And do you remember the film poster for Home Alone? And the Halloween mask, Ghostface, used in the Scream horror movies. Also, the silence in the sci-fi TV show Doctor Who is inspired by the Scream. In just a few minutes, you've learned the major facts about the Scream by Edvard Munch. What makes this painting so appealing are its powerful color palette, the dynamic use of lines and composition, and its enigmatic motifs.